Hi guys, welcome to History. Today we will be talking about Rome. And we talked about Rome a little bit before this. Remember Rome is in Italy and Italy is in Europe. Well today we're talking about a man who's very famous in history named Julius Caesar. Now Julius Caesar's parents were very wealthy. In fact, his dad was a very important man in Rome during the time when Rome was flourishing. Rome was a place that um, the rest of the world wanted to come see because they were doing so well. They had these beautiful buildings and they built these wonderful roads that other people didn't have. They had art. They did these um, gladiator fights, you know, in the Colosseum and people just wanted to come see Rome. Rome was this place with um, just the rest of the world was in awe of. And Julius Caesar happened to be born in Rome to parents who were wealthy. In fact, his father was also, um, he helped make the laws or the rules. So he was probably a politician in Rome. And Julius's uncle um, was one of the leaders of Rome. And so he was from a very influential family that um, helped helped Rome become this great place. And Julius's father was very proud that he had this son. And he said to everyone, my son is going to grow up to be a wonderful leader of Rome. He's, everyone's gonna know who he is. Everyone's gonna remember my son, Julius Caesar. And um, as Julius Caesar was, as he was growing, as soon as he was old enough to go to school, at all. His father sent him to the best school there was. And he learned to read and write and do math and do science and history and all the things that you're learning to do in school. And he also learned to do a thing called rhetoric. And rhetoric, it just means speaking in public, which is what you practice when you do your book reports. You get up in front and you tell us all about the book you read and your creative project and, um, and you you speech. It's called speech, right? And so Julius Caesar, he was actually really good at that part. He was a great speaker and people love to hear him speak. And so he, he actually um, would practice constantly. He'd practice constantly. And he, as he grew older, as he grew older and he grew into a man, his, he had a really nice voice. It helps to have a nice voice when you're a speaker. And um, he had these dark, intense eyes and this really nice deep throat uh, um, voice that people like to come and listen to and so Julius Caesar would stand up and he would give these speeches and people just loved listening to him they loved what he had to say they loved just hearing his voice and he thought well if I am to be a leader someday here in Rome I have got to practice my speaking skills and be a better speaker so that I can get everyone to listen to me because if people were going to vote for him to become a leader, they, you know, he would want them to listen to him and um, do what he said. And so he decided, he heard that there was a, um, there was a, an expert in teaching speech, teaching rhetoric in, in the, in, in a little island that was in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. So I have my map, it's kind of hard to see. You might have to get your map up on, on Google Maps or, or somewhere, you have to find your map that says where Italy is. And remember, Italy is in Europe. And if you can see, it's the one, right? It has the, looks like the little boot, right? And, and right around here underneath it is the Mediterranean Sea. And so, he decided he was going to go to the small island in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea and he was going to learn how to be the best speaker. Well, he hired someone to take him, someone who owned a ship. And the, the, when he went to go ask the, the captain, can I ride on your ship? Can you take me somewhere? The captain said, um, well, okay, but to the area where you want to go, there's pirates. And pirates, you know, they, they are not kind people. They will just come and take whatever they want. They'll capture us. They'll take my ship. They'll take my supplies off my ship. They might even take the people off my ship. I'm scared of the pirates. I don't really want to go to that part of the Mediterranean Sea. But if you really want to go and you have a lot of money, if you pay me extra, lots and lots of extra money, I will take you to the island in the Mediterranean Sea. 
So Julius Caesar said, well, I've got to learn, So and I have a lot of money. So here's my money, let's go. And they got on the ship, and they were sailing, and they, they hadn't been sailing very long when all of a sudden these they, they saw a ship coming behind them, and they recognized it as a pirate's ship. And they were, they were, the captain was terrified, and he tells everyone, Come, put up the sails, we've got to sail faster. Hurry, hurry, we've got to try and get away from these guys. And they tried to sail as fast as they could, but the pirates were faster, and they caught up to the ship, and they took it over, and they captured the people on the, on the ship, and they took all the goods off the ship, everything they wanted. And um, when they had their group of captives, they looked kind of in the middle of them, and most of them were the sailors, but there was Julius Caesar in the middle. And Julius Caesar was dressed in his really nice clothes, right? He was dressed all nice, and he looked important, and he acted important. In fact, he was standing there like, oh, these people. And the pirates saw him, and they went up to him, and they said, hmm, you look important, you look rich, I'm, we're going to hold you for ransom. And they took him onto their ship and they, they sent back, um, they sent back a, a note saying that, that they had Julius Caesar and that they wanted a ransom for him. And they told Julius Caesar, we're going to ask for $100,000. And Julius Caesar said, Pfft. $100,000? I'm worth more than that. Try $250,000 at least. And Julius Caesar didn't, didn't act like he was their captive. He, act, he acted more like they were his slaves. In fact, while, when he was on the ship and, and waiting for his um, ransom to come in, the money to come in so that he could go back home, he would yell at the pirates when he was trying to take a nap. He'd go, you savages, be quiet, I'm trying to take a nap. Or when they would bring him food, he'd go, what is this? This looks gross. You better cook me something better for dinner because this is just not acceptable. I want better food. And, and the pirates actually thought he was funny. He was actually funny. And um, finally, his ransom came in and they were ready to let him go. And he said, you know, I... I'm going to come back for you. This was unacceptable. You cannot, you cannot capture me. I'm Julius Caesar. You cannot capture me. I'm going to come back for you. And they said, <laughs> yeah, okay, right, whatever. Go ahead and try. And they set him free because they got the money they wanted, a lot of money from his very rich family. So when Julius Caesar got back home to Rome, he went and he convinced the government, the Roman government, to give him three of their best ships and he and soldiers to go with it and their best fighters and he got them on the ships and he said we're going to go take over those pirates we're going to go get them and he gets on one of the ships and they all three sail out right into the middle of the mediterranean sea where he knew the pirates were he sees the pirates and he he takes his ships and he surrounds the pirates and the pirates fight 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 they go back and forth on all three ships until of course right? The, the people, um, Julius Caesar's people won because there were more of them, more ships, more people, more fighters. And he captured the, the pirates and he told the captain, see, I told you I was coming back for you. And, um, Julius Caesar captured him and took him back to Rome and, um, and, <laughs> and, um, the pirates no longer were pirates. So, um, he was a he was a very strong man, a very confident man. Julius Caesar was, and um, he did enjoy being in Rome and learning things in Rome. And he also enjoyed sailing on ships. And so today, if you look in your packet, the um, paper behind um, your your direction sheet, there is um, a bunch of flags called maritime flags. And what they are, are they, they were flags that people on the ships a long time ago would communicate with. They, if they wanted to communicate with another ship or with, you know, anyone at another boat on, and they couldn't hear them, right? It was difficult. If you ever yelled kind of at someone in the ocean, they can't even hear you when they're a little bit in the ocean, right? But if you're in a ship, you really can't hear each other. So they would communicate with these big flags. And so I have some... Um, I have some supplies for you in your packet to make 
a flag. You can make as many as you want. You can see underneath it says what they mean and you can recreate them and you can communicate today with your family. There's a flag that says yes, there's a flag that says no, and you can communicate with your family with your flags and see how that goes today, okay? Have fun making your flags.